Hey there again guys, my name is Ben Ferriolo and I'm an amateur seismologist who hopes to make a career out of monitoring volcanic and tectonic hazard areas. Now if you haven't seen my most recent video about the magnitude 4.6 possible collapse event off the coast of Maryland, USA just a few days ago, please go check that out now. It's very interesting, very intriguing. I also talk about my research on that video that is posted on my website, so please check the description box below for a link to my website. It's right below my email address. Also check out Scott's new channel called the NW Geology Guy, a link below as well. He has come out with some cool content so go show him some support and help his channel grow if you want. In this video we will strictly be talking about Yellowstone Supervolcano. Just a quick update with the seismicity that has been occurring in the past day and a half or so. There was an increase in seismicity. I will quickly show the seismic data and analyze these events. Real quick though, as many of you may remember, um, about mid-2018 last year, uh, there was a large eruption at Hawaii. Actually, there were multiple, multiple eruptions, about 63 explosive eruptions at Kilauea Caldera, where it collapsed because the magma withdrew and the subsidence was crazy, which means the ground sank towards the ground, and it just sank, it sank, it sank, it collapsed on itself. There were a lot of rock falls because the magma shifted from Puoo and Kilauea and went all the way to the Lower East Rift Zone and created huge lava fountains, huge splatter cones, including one cone that they are about to name. Uh, I don't know what the name is that they're thinking about, but the cone itself is about 180 feet tall, I believe. But I believe that height is starting to shrink just a little bit just because of erosion and some extra rock, rock falls. So that's not what I want to talk about, though. But you remember that eruption, right? Well, seismicity is increasing. This is the past day and a half for Hawaii. A little bit less than a day and a half, so almost a day. We have an earthquake in Mauna Loa, some at Kilauea. One at Puoo, but the thing that struck me odd is this right here. You see this line of earthquakes right here? This got me thinking, what could this be? This looks like they are part of the same event, right? And I thought that before I looked at them. So we're going to zoom in. Check this out. Let's zoom in only on these events right here. Let's kind of pan out so that it only shows. So, okay. So it's just these. These are 11 earthquakes. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. 11 earthquakes. Pretty much in a straight line. Now, notice how they're pretty much all around the same depth. 39 kilometers in depth, 35 kilometers, 45 kilometers in depth, 38 kilometers, 37, 39, 36, 38, 44. Now that's pretty deep, guys. Pretty deep. I just wanted to alert you guys that there is possibly an increase in seismicity again for near the Kilauea volcano. But, you know, it's not major. It's off the coast, underwater. Pretty deep, too. But there have been some multiple high-frequency earthquakes at Kilauea itself, including multiple low-frequency earthquakes as well. Again, this string of earthquakes did occur at a pretty deep depth. Well, pretty deep for the Hawaii area. I've never really seen earthquakes occur deeper than this. So to me, these are pretty deep. So let's check out the flow. So here would be the first earthquake in this sequence, right? Because this is the oldest, and up here is the newest, right? So let's go down. Check this out. Let's go to this one. First one starts up here. So you think it's going to come from here and go down, right? Well, let's not think about it. Let's pretend that earthquake did not happen. Because it did happen about two hours earlier, so it may be unrelated. All these other earthquakes that are connected occurred at about 12 UTC. Notice that? So let's start here. Boom. Now watch where it goes. Boom. 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 Boom, boom, kind of goes off to the side, but did you see that? Did you see that? Look at that, and then it goes down there and right there. But first off, pretty much the first five or six earthquakes, one, two, three, four, five. So the first five earthquakes occurred in a straight line, a straight line, guys, getting shallower and deeper at the same time. So I thought that was very strange. Very, very strange. Now, I will be trying to make an update on Kilauea in Hawaii soon, so keep an eye out for that. I'm not going to show the seismic data in this video due to time, but again, keep an eye out for the coming Hawaii video, and I probably will talk about this in there. Even if I don't, we're going to talk about some interesting stuff. Probably going to be a good week until I get that out, but again, just keep your eye out just in case. Now here we are at the infamous website, is this thing on .org slash Yellowstone slash Day Thumbs. Now there was a small increase in seismicity around the Maple Creek area, as you can see here. 
So let's focus real quick. So it might not show on the seismic data right away, but why don't we look at these right up here? We'll focus on the other quakes in just a second. Again, I will focus on this real quick, but it will be brief since there is another location at Yellowstone I would like to point my attention to that I think is a little bit more important than these earthquakes today. But still, we're going to list them off just real quick. Down here, we had a 0 0.7 near the Lower Geyser Basin and south of Madison River in Purple Mountain. And that's at 13.9 kilometers in depth. That's pretty deep. 0 0.4 at 10 kilometers in depth, 0 0.3 at 9.8. A 1.2 at 10.5 kilometers and a 0 0.3 at 10.1. Notice, we go right here. That one occurred in the middle. Doesn't really look like there's too big of a pattern right there. But those are the earthquakes that occurred, at least that were reported. Remember, they don't report all of them, guys. Now, you can see some of those earthquakes here. You can see a few of them right there, right there. We'll, we'll, we'll check it out in just a second. But remember, I don't like to use these much since they are only images, guys. These are only images constrained by pixels. This is not actual data that you can expand or contract. This is not data, guys. It may look like data. This is not. You cannot analyze this. This is only an image constrained by pixels. So why don't we access the data? Why don't we do that real quick? So here's the Iris Data Select URL Builder. In other words, this is the complete, almost two-decade seismic archive for pretty much all stations in the United States and many in the world. Of course, there are other seismic archives that I use, such as NCEDC, SCEDC, or INGV, but the IRIS Data Select URL Builder Archive is the main source that I use for my seismic data needs. So let's set everything up. I already have YMC, network is WY, station code YMC, location code 01, channel code EHZ. Now this is how you access seismic data, guys. This is how you do it, and you don't even have to analyze the data if you don't if you don't want to. If you just want to see the heli quarters and make them bigger, make them smaller, make the amplitudes look larger, take away the amplitude cuttings, you can do whatever you want and make these heli quarters here look however you want. So you can make these. See how these have red amplitude cuts? Yes, those red marks are amplitude cuts. You can completely remove those in the program swarm if you don't like those red marks. You can do that if you want. I think I just lost track. Oh, there we go. Okay, so 10 UTC on the 22nd. And let's do the most recent as of 11.51 a.m., January 23rd, 2019. So it's almost noon. So to make sure we get the most recent data, I'm just going to do the 24th, just to top it all off. We have YMC, EHC, 22nd, 24th. Okay, we're good. Now let's download the data. Once you're done entering all the parameters you need, you just click the link. And that's it, and it downloads the data in mini seed format. I mean, there's other formats that you could choose, but the best, the one that I recommend is mini seed. I re notice that says mini seed right there. I recommend that. Now let's go to swarm. I already have some of these up, but let's click out real quick. And now, why don't we open the file? Here's the most recent one right there. Let's open it and see if it worked. Let's see, it says YMC, yes, and for the 22nd. Yes, starting at 10. Perfecto. Okay. First off, I do want to say that at Yellowstone National Park last night, there was a strange, strange signal. And I'm not really going to get into this because I do know that this is probably some type of helicopter or uh, I don't know. I don't know how it could be a helicopter going up to 1,500 amplitude count, showing on multiple stations, including MCID, YHH, YNR. You can go look at those stations right now if you want. But the times, the arrival times are all different, meaning that whatever this was was on the surface and it was moving all back and forth i mean it did not have a straight path so i'm thinking there was a helicopter going around or some type of big aircraft that is flying very very low going around the area because you could tell emergent high frequency characteristics with mainly surface waves so that that this only looks like a surface event right here plus let's look at the frequencies it almost looks like the frequencies drop a little bit, kind of like that other surface event I detected not too long ago. But I do not want to get into that very quick. I don't want to do that. I want to look at some of these earthquakes. That is not an earthquake. All right, let's go to the first one. Seems like there's an emergent event. This could be a distant earthquake. I don't know. Here, we do have two. It looks like there was only one, but there are two. Here's the spectrogram image. Remember, this shows frequency vertically and time period horizontally, and the color range that you see is power. 
Now let's go forward. Looks like there's another little tiny, tiny guy right there. Here's another one right there. Another one right there. Another one. Except check this out. Now you, when you look right here, that looks like there's a little tiny spike for a tiny earthquake, right? Well, when you look at this, let's zoom in. Yeah, not an earthquake. Looks like a calibration spike. Definitely not an earthquake. So that's why you got to be careful when looking at the online seismic charts. And again, all the earthquakes that happened today at near Maple Creek had mid-range frequencies, which I thought was very, very odd. And there's another one down there. Another one down there. I believe the strongest was this one for the Maple Creek area. Going to about 15 to 18,000 amplitude count. This one only went to about 10. This one went to about 4. Uh, yeah, I'm not seeing any other stronger ones. This one went to 10. And we have other microquakes throughout the day as well. Let's move forward. Yeah, okay. Multiple tiny. I mean, there was just... There are a lot of tiny, tiny events today. Little tiny popping of the crust. But again, most of them did have mid-range frequencies. Now, I do want to hurry this up. I do not want to take too much time analyzing this. Because I would way rather focus on the earthquake swarm that caused this event right here. Now, I want you to notice this. This is at Maple Creek. Now, this earthquake that occurred happened far south of Old Faithful Geyser. So, that's pretty far away, guys. I understand that. It's very far away. That's why this earthquake looks like this. But I did not expect to see this strong of surface waves. I was not expecting to see that. This earthquake occurred at about near 10 kilometers in depth. I'll show you the exact data for this in just a second, but this is the these are the events that I wanted to study real quick. This is the main purpose for this video. Oh, and by the way, there was another microquake. And as of the most recent data for Maple Creek area in the Hebgen Lake area, there's a few other microquakes throughout the area. The most recent one being this one, going to about I'm going to say 3,100 amplitude count. Very strange looking earthquake too. And then we, at the end, did have some emergent-like, or sorry, excuse me, emergent tremor-like events down here. Very small, though, going only to 300 amplitude count. So let's move on. So now we're back at isthisthingon.org slash Yellowstone slash daythumbs. So let's go to the next location of recent seismicity at Yellowstone. Notice you can see a large event right here. See that little red line? And there, and there, pretty much showing up on every single station. Now, I know I say this a lot in many of my videos, but I cannot stress this enough. If you see a large signal with the amplitudes cut, but it only shows on one seismic station, then it is highly likely to be surface noise. Even a very tiny negative magnitude earthquake can still travel to multiple stations. And yes, the red marks signify where the amplitudes were cut, but not removed, meaning the data is still there. So here we are at station YLT near the northern tip of West Thumb Lake. Personally, this is one of my favorite stations in the whole WY network at Yellowstone. Now notice we do have some swarming here right before 1.30 UTC. Some very, very minor swarming, but still it occurred. Let's go back just real fast and go to Borehole 944. Here we are at Borehole 944. This station resides on the southern tip of West Thumb Lake, and we can see the same seismicity here just before 1.30 UTC. But we also noticed there was another rapid fire swarm at Yellowstone. See, it starts right about here, right before 10 UTC, and goes and ends at about, I'm going to say, maybe 10.25 UTC or something. Didn't last that long, but it did occur. And these rapid fire swarms seem to be increasing lately and happening almost once per week now. 2018 saw the highest count of rapid fire swarms near the West Thumb Lake area. Now this swarm was very peculiar though in that it occurred in a location where not that many earthquakes happen. Or do they? Here we are back at earthquake.usgs.gov. This is the location of today's rapid fire swarm. South of Shoshone Lake and just west of Lewis Lake, just outside of the Caldera boundary. They have only reported two earthquakes so far for this area today. So from a casual observer, from the outside, it would appear that there was no swarm. However, as you are about to see in just a minute, this was another rapid-fire swarm. Though it occurred in an odd location, or did it? Now right here, notice how it says 2016, this is a while ago. Right here are the earthquakes 
reported for this swarm right here at Yellowstone that occurred on November 25th, 2016. Now as we go back, I'm actually in the process of studying this swarm right now, since it will be included in my new seismic events page that I am secretly making. <laughs> Notice it is slightly more to the north of today's swarm. Yes, today's swarm was right about here. But it occurred in generally the same area. Seismic plots to this swarm here will be shown on my website soon. I will let you guys know when that occurs. I just wanted to show you the most recent rapid fire swarm to occur in this area it was all the way back in 2016. Here we are back at the most recent seismic activity. Again, only two reported earthquakes for this swarm. So the fact that there was a swarm here definitely isn't crazy. But this swarm was very strange. Now, why has Yellowstone been seeing such strange swarms lately? As of 12.14 p.m. Pacific Time, January 23rd, 2019, these are the only earthquakes reported. They were a magnitude 2.0 at 10.8 kilometers in depth. At 9.59 UTC, which is what we see in just a second, and then a magnitude 3.0 at 10.05 UTC, just about six minutes later, at 9.4 kilometers in depth. So why don't we go take a look at the data from the closest seismic station to this swarm. Now, how, we, how do we find the closest seismic station? Check it out. This is what you do. Now, here we are at the event page for the magnitude 3.0 they reported for this swarm. Whenever you see USGS report an event and you want to discover the closest seismic station to that event, just do what I'm about to do. So you pretty much just go to the event page of any given earthquake, press origin. See how it says origin right here? Wait for it to load. Details, phases, magnitudes. Press phases. Now again, we're trying to find the closest station to this event, and you can do this for any earthquake they report. Now, once you press phases, go down here and press arrival time once. Press that once, and it'll put th this in order. Excuse me. Notice how it says WYYDD HHC 01 is the closest station. Borehole 90, 944, excuse me, was next up, and YLT was the next one after that. So that means YDD is the closest station. But wait a second. Now, notice how it said YDD was the closest station to the swarm. That means it would have to have been down in this area somewhere, right? And it was even closer than YLT right here or Borehole 944. How can that be? This site does not show YDD right now. Well, that is because this site should not be the number one source that you use. YDD is another seismic station at West Thumb Lake inside of Yellowstone National Park in between YLT and Borehole 944, but you don't see it here. And it has not been added to isthisthingon.org for some reason. Regardless, we could still access the data. So where is Station YDD? Well, we're on the Iris G map. I believe I do have a link to this in the description box below as well. Just look at all the links that I have. If I don't have it, then just comment and I will link it. And let's press YDD for the station and press Update Map. Notice YDD. It did come up. Okay, so where is Station YDD? Let's zoom out. Let's zoom out. All right, West Thumb Lake, look at that. Station YLT is right up here, and Borehole 944 is right there. Let's just kind of put it in perspective, shall we? An update map with YLT and Borehole 944. Here are the three stations. YLT is right here. Borehole 944 is right here. YDD is pretty much in the middle. Now, notice this. It says it was installed September 5th, 2018. This is a brand new station, guys. Brand spanking new. 2018, September 5th. Now, remember, there used to be a station called H17A. Well, station H17A was completely removed, and I was not really happy about that, but they replaced it with a brand new station. Again, YDD, but you wouldn't know that if you didn't monitor the seismic data, right? Because it doesn't even show really on here. It shows on the University of Utah website, yes, but it, it doesn't show on is this thing on.org, which is what most people use. So since YDD was the closest station to this swarm, let's zoom out and understand why. Remember, the swarm occurred right here, and this is the closest station again. So let's zoom out. And why don't we go to the data select URL builder? We are back. All right. So let's real quick download the data from station YDD at Yellowstone. Remember, this is actually a broadband station, not a short period station. So it will look a little different at first. However, do not fret. I know how to fix it, and I'm here to help. Let's download the most recent data since January 22nd at 10 UTC. 
All the way to January 24th at 0 UTC. I know it's not that yet, but that'll top it off since right now it's 12.19 p.m. Pacific time, January 23rd. Okay, so let's down. Nope, whoops, I did that wrong. Uh-oh, I did not want YMC. Let's go back, YDD01, it was HHZ. There we go. All right, now let's download that. Here we are back in the Seismic Program Swarm. Remember on my website, I do have the download location seismic program and I do have a page in the how to drop down menu showing you how to use this program it is quite amazing I love swarm guys it's pretty awesome okay so we have YDD the most recent data now since this is a broadband station and everything looks so wavy notice how it looks much more wavy than a short period station that's because most short period stations do not record every frequency Broadband stations record every single frequency down to zero hertz. 0, 0.00000 all the way down. That's why it looks so wavy. Now let's do a high pass 0 0.7 hertz filter just real quick. Persistent rescale off. Now remember at about 130 UTC, there are some unreported earthquakes. According to the P-Wave arrivals, they did occur basically at Shoshone Lake and Lewis Lake, showing that... This seismicity right here, see these earthquakes right here, are most likely connected to the swarm down here. But first, let's just take a look with the spectrogram real quick. We see one, two, three, four, with high, high frequencies, but still very rapid fire. Look, you can see multiple events right here. Look at that. Multiple events blending into almost an emergent tremor-like event. Look at that. So we did, and they were pretty small, guys. The largest one was this one, going to probably about 4,000 amplitude count, not that big. Maybe a magnitude 0 0.4 earthquake. So it wasn't that major at all. Then here's another one at the end, and then it slowly calms down with a few other tiny, tiny microquakes later on in the day. All right, let's go back to the seismogram, waveform plots. I just want to check the dominant frequencies of this right here, which we can use with the spectral plot. Log frequency off. Dominant frequencies at about, I'm going to say 16.4 hertz, and what is that? 6.8 hertz. So definitely not low frequency or even mid frequency. Definitely was a high frequency event. Remember, whenever I see earthquake swarms, you should always look out for low frequency earthquakes or low frequency tremor. Usually staying below the 5 hertz line, though low frequency events can go slightly above the 5 hertz line, but usually they don't. Okay, so we know that there's a tiny bit of swarming at 130 UTC around that time period. Let me pan this down and look at the actual burst and seismicity that, that occurred today. And remember, let's go back and back. Again, they're only reporting two so far. One was a 2.0 at 95938. Let's look at that. The 2.0 at 10.8 kilometers in depth was this one right here. Let's take a look. This one right here. Let's check out the dominant frequency range of this. Looks like it starts to drop at about 9 hertz. Definitely not a low frequency event, but interesting nonetheless, especially since it occurred in rapid succession. So that was the 2.0, and then they say the 3.0 occurred at 10.05, right? 10.05, 10.05.57, so pretty much 10.06. So that would be this one right here. Let's zoom in on the magnitude 3.0. Let's check the dominant frequency range of this event. Log power off. Pretty much the same as the other earthquake. No dominant low frequencies. Actually, dominant mid-range frequencies somewhat. Now, I real quick just want to take the filter off just to see all of the frequencies of this event. Just, to, just in case if there are some strange, strange low frequencies. But I am not seeing anything. Look at, the, look at this. That looks like three separate events, doesn't it? That actually looks like three separate events blending to create an emergent tremor-like event. Still no low frequency events, still no low frequency events, but I am confused as to why a rapid fire swarm would occur near Shoshone Lake, which has not been seen since November 25th, 2016, which I thought was very interesting. And probably not many people know that either. And then after the swarm ended, we had some more microquakes throughout the day. Very, very tiny, very minor, nothing like what we saw earlier. So... 
Let's go through with the waveform plots just real quick, just to take one last look. Let's re-add that filter, but make it a 0.4 hertz filter. So it's still going to look a little wavy, but that's okay. Looks like we had three or four right there. There's one right there. That was the 2.0 at 10.8 kilometers in depth. Then we had some other very tiny ones. Now remember, this one was about three events, it looked like. One, two, three, four. So I'm probably going to say no more than 20 earthquakes today. They're only reporting two again, but no more than 20 earthquakes of all sizes. So it was not major, but I do believe this will increase again. See, and they're popping off like crazy. That's 10.04.13, 10.04.33, and 10.04.53, pretty much. So pretty much every, like, 10 or 20 seconds, the one's popping off. Even the tiny ones, but still. I love these rapid-fire swarms, guys. They're very interesting. And let's real quick take a look at the coda. Remember, the coda is an end tail of an earthquake. Okay, that's pretty much normal. Let's go forward. So, guys, we do have an increase in seismicity somewhat near West Thumb Lake, but this was a rapid-fire swarm again which is happening a lot lately. And I'm doing a lot of research on that right now and creating my own Seismic Events page. Again, here is the one before 130 UTC, which most likely occurred in the same exact area as the swarm shown down here. And yes, this is a swarm, guys. A swarm is pretty much more than... I think a swarm can be considered at least five earthquakes in a centralized location within, what is it, 12 to 24 hours or something like that? That's the bare minimum to call it a swarm. Here's the start of the second burst of seismicity I just showed. Again, there's the magnitude 2.0 at 10.8 kilometers in depth. Some other microquakes occurring at such rapid succession, they almost look like a tremor, kind of. Remember, a lot of emergent tremor-like events that happen at volcanoes usually are caused by magma, but can be caused by other processes, but not tectonic activity. Usually, this is some type of rock-breaking sequence. Now, remember, hydrothermal fluids, very hot, hot water can cause earthquake swarms like this, but I'm more inclined to believe a lot of these rapid-fire swarms are caused by magma itself, especially the New Year's Eve swarm. On, again, on my website, under the Seismic Events drop-down menu, click Yellowstone Supervolcano, and you will see two posts in that blog section. Uh, one about the January 6th swarm, which was pretty crazy. And also the other crazy swarm that happened just a week prior to that on New Year's Eve. Again, there's the magnitude 3.0, which was the largest event of the day. Keep going forward. Keep going forward. And again, today is January 23rd, 2019. So the year is, oh, not the year, excuse me. <laughs> so the month is almost over. And then the swarm ended. Let's look at the most recent data stream, shall we? Not seeing much low-frequency events. Remember, my focus when there are swarms is usually right below the 5 hertz line, guys. That's usually my focus because that's usually where a lot of volcanic activity occurs. Harmonic volcanic tremor usually stays below 5 hertz, especially since volcanic tremor is theorized to be many, many low-frequency earthquakes happening in such rapid succession that you cannot tell them apart so they look like a low-frequency tremor. That is what is theorized to cause a lot of volcanic tremor out there. Let's keep going forward, not seeing much. Not seeing much. There's a little bit of a line being generated right down there, but yeah. And the most recent data stream, right here, nothing. Okay, so we really haven't seen any more seismicity for this swarm, for this area, except right here. There might be an earthquake right there. Yep, there was another earthquake at 1946 UTC, which was about an hour ago or so. A little less than an hour. So nothing too major right now. Remember, this swarm could start back up at any time, so keep your eye on it, and I will let you guys know if this swarm continues or if a new one breaks out in any location. Well, guys, that is it for right now. Hawaii seismicity is increasing once again, but whether this is just a quick increase or the start of something else has yet to be seen. Also, there was a slight increase in seismicity for the Maple Creek and Hebgen Lake area, along with some swarming down south of Old Faithful Geyser near Shoshone and Lewis Lake. Again, why is Yellowstone acting so strangely lately? 
Why have the majority of the recent swarms there been of the rapid fire variety? I don't know, but like I said two videos ago, I do believe another round of uplift could be starting. We will have to wait and see, but if true, this means even bigger swarms are approaching. Now, regardless of the implications, we should monitor this area closely and accurately. If you are a new subscriber or viewer, please don't forget to check out my recent videos and my website as well. Remember, my website contains about 75% of my research or so, and I'm still going to be adding more in the next month, especially a new page coming in about, I'm going to say probably five, six days. I'll add that, and I'll put out a YouTube post, not a YouTube video, but a YouTube post when I do that. Now, again, a link to my site is in the description box below, right under my email address. I got to go right now because I got some stuff to do today, but if anything changes, I will let you know. Remember, whenever you see swarming at Yellowstone, please remember to check back to multiple pages on my website now and then to see if I added a blog post or a new page dealing with that specific swarm. Thank you all for your support, and I will be back soon. God bless, and remember, the truth is considered hate or fear to those who hate or fear the truth. Ben Ferriolo signing off, and wow, I want some snow. It's been so long since we've gotten some snow here in Washington State, guys. Seattle hasn't gotten any snow for this winter at all. At all. None at all. That is weird. I've never seen that, and it's been warm. It's been so warm, like 55, 60 degrees here, and it's just boggling my mind, and things are starting to sprout on the trees. Flowers are starting to bloom. It's not even spring yet. But then also, off in the Sahara Desert, they're getting snow in the Sahara Desert. But us here in Seattle, we're not getting snow, but a desert is getting snow. Yeah, that kind of ticked me off. <laughs> you know, people say, oh, it's climate change, oh, carbon emissions. No, no, it is definitely the pole shift. Because as they're slowly breaking that information to us, the pole is shifting faster and faster and faster. And I believe that is what's causing pretty much everything, every crazy thing everywhere, like those strange trumpet sounds, strange earthquakes, strange events, everything strange that is geological pretty much or weather related is caused by that magnetic shift, I believe. They even had to pretty much change all of their runways and all of their software on their airplanes because the magnetic field was shifting so much. So who knows? Ben Variolo signing off. I hope you guys have a wonderful day. See you later.